Okay, um, on behalf of the Database of Byzantine Book Epigrams team, I would like to welcome you all to this session. Uh, this is our third lecture from the margins. Um, the previous two lectures by uh, Julie Putin and Andreas Roby um, have been uh, recorded, so if you are interested, you can still find them online. Uh, so today is the third lecture. We will um, receive, no doubt, another very interesting presentation on Byzantine book epigrams, which I hope you will all enjoy very much. Uh, today we welcome uh, Jacopo Marco to our digital stage. Um, Jacopo is a PhD student in Birmingham, a third year PhD student, am I right, Jacopo? Yes, um, who graduated uh, from uh, Udine, where he obtained his bachelor's degree and master's degree. And now he is working um, within the ERC project on Catena. So the title of the ERC project is Catena and research is on um, Catena on New Testament manuscripts. And Jacopo is making, um, is writing a thesis on um, Catena on the epistles of Paul and more specifically the pseudo ecumenian commentary on the epistle to the Romans, about which we will hear more in a minute. Um, Jacopo's presentation today will deal with book epigrams in New Testament manuscripts on uh, the letters of Paul. So um, we are very curious to hear more about this. Um, the chat will be disabled during the presentation, but will be open again for questions after the presentation. So you can ask uh, uh, questions through chat or through video after the presentation. Um, and if you are willing to do so, um, we would be very glad to ask you to, uh, to switch off to switch on your video during the presentation so that Jacopo has some uh, nice and friendly faces to look at. So Jacopo, the floor is yours. Good luck and thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Asim, for, for the presentation and uh, thank you uh, to the uh, DBBE team for accepting my, uh, my paper. So first of all, I'll restart with uh, um, sharing the screen. Uh, I prepare a PowerPoint presentation and uh, you can use also the handout as a general reference uh, to uh, the manuscript that I'm going to discuss because I will refer uh, use it to the manuscript using the GA number rather than the complete shelf mark. So you can compare the GA number with the shelf mark using the handout. So um, before starting to talk about the use of uh, the book epigrams in the uh, New Testament Catena on Paul, I would like to uh, give you an, um, an overview on the structure of my thesis, of my presentation. In the first part of my presentation, I will give you a general definition of uh, commentaries and Catena on the Pauline epistles, with a particular focus on the pseudo and catena on the Pauline, uh, on the Pauline epistles and on Romans, which is actually the topic uh, of my uh, of my uh, doctorate thesis. I will uh, briefly analyze uh, the manuscript that I selected for my my edition, and in the second part of my presentation, I will uh, um, I will illustrate uh, uh, some examples from each of the category of the typologies of the book epigrams uh, uh, using the same typologies that I found in the DBE uh, database. In uh, the last part of my presentation, I will um, focus your attention on uh, a series of epigrams that I found in uh, for manuscripts, uh, and I will also talk about uh, uh, possibly newly discovered epigrams uh, on the uh, on the New Testament catena. So first of all, uh, it is necessary to distinguish between commentaries by single authors uh, on the Pauline epistles, for example, the 32 homilies of uh, John Chrysostom on, uh, uh, on the Pauline letters, or the commentary of Theodoret of Cyrus on, uh, on the Romans, uh, from Catene. Catene are a collection of patristic and exegetical material with the biblical text and the extracts from the Greek church fathers. Uh, for example, we got a Catene on the uh, Pauline epistles made by Theophilact, Otimus uh, Zagabenus, and Ocumenius, which is the, the author of the, of, the, of the Catena, which I'm talking about today. The earliest uh, attestation of uh, New Testament Catena is the so-called Codex Zacintius, uh, preserved at the Cambridge University Library. Uh, I put in my PowerPoint presentation an image from uh, the folio 144 rector of the Codex Zacintius. It is a frame Catena from the 6th century with the text of the Gospel of Luke, overwritten with a 12th century lectionary. Uh, and the, the, the Codex Zacintius was, uh, uh, was uh, studied uh, and published uh, by uh, the uh, ERC project, the Codex Zacintius, by the University of Birmingham. 
so talking about uh, the layout of the catena, there are two main formats for uh, the catena manuscripts of the New Testament. The so-called frame or marginal catena on the left, where the biblical text is in the middle of the page, surrounded by the text of the commentary made up of different extracts from the Greek church fathers. These extracts are linked uh, with, uh, the, to the biblical lemma that they are corresponding to by a series of numbers or by a series of symbols. Uh, on the other side, the alternating or full page catene uh, have the biblical lemma immediately followed by the text of the exegesis in the format of a full running text. In order to distinguish between the end of the biblical lemmata and the beginning of the text of the catena, we can have also uh, uh, we can have a biblical have a, a blank space followed by two points in horizontal line, or the biblical lemmata by be uh, rubricated, for example, like in this uh, manuscript uh, from uh, from Munich that I put in my presentation, or uh, they can be present also uh, deeply before the biblical lemmata in order to distinguish between the biblical lemmata at the beginning of the text of the catena. Out of more 200 manuscripts uh, on, uh, with a catena on the Pauline letters, uh, sometimes in combination with the text of the Acts, uh, the Catholic Epistles, and the Revelation, my attention focuses primarily on uh, the uh, 89 manuscripts uh, with the text of the Pseudo-Cumenian Catena on the Romans. I would like to give you some basic information about the figure of Ecumenius. Before the beginning of the 20th century, the scholarship was unanimous to identify Ecumenius with a 10th century Bishop of Trica, while Frank Stickup was the first one to propose to identify Ecumenius with a 6th century monophysite writer, author of a commentary on the Revelation and the Catena on the Pauline Letters and on the Acts. The uh, theory by Franz Dickens uh, was supplied by the discovery of uh, a manuscript with the commentary of the Revelation attributed to Ecumenius in the Biblioteca Regionale Universitaria in Messina, and by the discovery of uh, a private correspondence between Severus of Antioch and Ecumenius. In this uh, correspondence, Ecumenius is called uh, Comi. So he's a lie man, uh, he's got two children and he's got a wife. So that's why uh, Franz Dickens proposed to distinguish between the 10th century uh, author, the 10th century Bishop of Trica and the 6th century uh, author of uh, this uh, comment on the Revelation. Uh, I currently, uh, the majority of the scholarship tried to distinguish between the three different figures of Ecumenius. The one, uh, the, the one is the 10th century Bishop of Trica, the one as the author of the comment on the Revelation, and the one as the author of the Catena on the Pauline Letters and on the Acts. Currently, there is no edition of uh, the uh, Pseudo-Ecumenian Catena on the Pauline Letters, and the only editions and translation that we have are of Ecumenius commentary on the Revelation. So actually, I'm working on and developing the first ever edition of the Scolia of the uh, Pseudo-Ecumenian Catena on the Romans. So out of, uh, as I said before, more than 200 manuscripts with the catena on the Pauline letters, uh, I selected 89 manuscripts in total in, in Romans. And out of uh, these 89 uh, manuscripts that have been identified thanks to uh, the beginning of the text of the catena attributed to Ecumenius, that is, Tropus Graefein, I tune to Kaiser to Tonoma, eight manuscripts has, have been selected for the edition of the, uh, of the text. Uh, besides the beginning of the text of the commentary, uh, the classification of the witnesses is based on the presence or absence of the so-called corpus extravagantium and scolia fociana. The extravagantes, first called uh, uh, such by Karl Stab, that uh, for the first time in 1926 uh, published a list of uh, uh, all the catena type on the Pauline, uh, on the Pauline epistles, these extravagantes are the unnumbered comments that are found next to the approximately 920 numbered extracts in the pseudo Comerian catena. This scholia are usually preceded by the name of uh, the Greek church fathers, whether in abbreviated or in a full form, or by selection of various symbols. On the other end, the scholia fociana are the comments attributed by the, uh, to the 9th century archbishop Fotiuv of Constantinople. 
So on the basis of the content on the manuscripts and uh, on the presence of this uh, additional material, I use the same classification made by Karl Staub to list uh, these eight manuscripts uh, to produce the critical edition of the text uh, within four different groups so far. The first group is the type A or the normal typus, which include manuscripts with the first original stay of numbered scolia on the Pauline letters and the first later addition of the extravagantes. Then we've got the manuscripts of the group C or dervetite typus, which include the manuscripts with the number comments plus the two later editions of the extravagantes and the scolia fociana or the, the scolia attributed to forces of Constantinople. And then uh, two groups, uh, uh, the group E, which include the manuscript with uh, uh, random uh, extracts from uh, the Pseudicum in Catena, and the manuscript with an abbreviated or abridged version of uh, the uh, Pseudicum in Catena on, uh, on the Romans. So in my presentation, I put the image of the, uh, of the opening page on the Romans uh, of the manuscript that I selected uh, as the standard text uh, for my edition. I selected this manuscript, uh, Marchandos Greco Z33 J 1923, on the grounds that it contains the full set of exegetical material. So the, the first set of uh, numbered scolia, uh, the first and later edition of uh, the Corpus Extravagantium, uh, preceded by the name of the Greek Church Fathers uh, with symbols or with the complete form of the name, and then the, nine, uh, the approximately 172 scolia attributed to Fox of Constantinople. So this is a typical example of a frame catena with the biblical uh, text in the middle of the page and the text of the, uh, of the, of, of the, uh, of the commentaries from the Greek Church Fathers and from Fox of Constantinople around the text uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the Romans. So uh, the second part of uh, my presentation will offer an overview on the book epigrams uh, in uh, the 89 manuscripts of the Pseudocum and Catena on uh, the Romans. These epigrams have been identified thanks to the database, and this classification is based basically on the content on the, on the, on the epigrams, uh, using the same typologies uh, that I found in the DBBE and in Lux German as well. In doing so, I also considered the position uh, of the epigrams in the manuscript considered for this presentation. Most of the epigrams are added by the same end or by, uh, of the main text or by a later end uh, in the upper or in the lower margins. In particular, for uh, the frame catena, we can have also epigrams, book epigrams added in the space between, uh, between the text of the catena and the beginning of the biblical text in the middle of the page. Also, uh, we have epigrams added by a later end, usually in the closing or opening fly leaves uh, alongside the probazione scalami or other additional texts. Uh, and uh, for uh, uh, particular cases of manuscript, which I will talk later about in the last part of my presentation, I would like to focus attention on a series of epigrams added within the Italian apparatus. When we talk uh, about the Italian apparatus in the, uh, man in the New Testament catena, on the Pauline letters in particular, we talk about the complete set of uh, prologues, uh, prefaces, list uh, uh, of Kefalaya on, uh, on the Pauline letters. Uh, about the meter, uh, the majority of the epigrams that I consider for the presentation are dodecasyllable meters, with a few exceptions that I include in my, in my PowerPoint. So one decapentasyllable, one heptasyllable, one dactylhexameter, one pentameter. And of course, the majority of the epigrams that I consider for this presentation are anonymous, with just a few exceptions, which I would like to, to mention to you today. So one, uh, two occurrences uh, attributed to Gregorios in, uh, added by a letter and in uh, the closing fly leaves of the manuscript of Gregory Island 056, uh, or the, man, the epigrams attributed to Andrea Moraios in uh, the manuscript J203, or the, uh, the epigrams attributed to Theophilactos Nezeraios in J1845. Uh, there, are, there is also an epigram attributed to uh, Johannes de Pagomenos in a colophon of uh, uh, the manuscript uh, J1952, and uh, one epigram attributed to Marcos Marmuna in a note of possession in the manuscript uh, Palatinus Grecus 224 GA 1998, which I will uh, talk later about. So the first category of uh, epigrams uh, that I'm going to discuss with you today included the so-called author-related epigrams that uh, um, agree with uh, Loxterman laudatory category. 
These epigrams uh, praise the author of the main text of, of the manuscript, so Paul, uh, and uh, for, uh, generally speaking, uh, I found some common, sorry, some common um, attributions, for example, in the epigrams that I considered for my presentation. In the DBB type 3166 that is found in the manuscript J91, there are um, the employment of uh, uh, images related to the music in order to stress the importance of the, uh, rhetorical, uh, uh, the, the rhetoric and the eloquence of Paul. So Paul, in this type found in J99, J91, is described as a rhetor, is described as a liran, is described as an organon. Uh, at the same time, you got also images related to the nature and to the storm, uh, the threefold wave and hurricane in the deep, in the type uh, six, 6006, uh, always in the manuscript of GA uh, 1845. And also, uh, warlike images are uh, employed. For example, in the type 6005, Paul is represented as Alcar Monarchicos uh, Oploforos. But uh, we got also the employment of Christian images related to the figure of Paul. Paul is called Young Lamb, a wren, or the shepherd, poimen, in the uh, type 3172 in the manuscript GA 9091. Uh, At the same time, uh, we also have uh, uh, epigrams that describe uh, um, the figure of the, the figures of the commentators and the interpreters of the Pauline corpus. Um, for example, in this uh, um, in this epigram from the manuscript J1924, uh, type uh, 5659, uh, there is the mention of Theodorus and the Comenius uh, as the commentators of the, the, the Pauline corpus, and uh, and I, and uh, I quote: "As soon as the golden mouth, which is the typical attribution for." John Chrysostom speaks, these are silent. Uh, among the other related epigrams, you got also uh, epigrams that explain the content of the images of, uh, of, of some manuscript. And in this case, we can consider these epigrams also as uh, image related epigrams. For example, I decided to put in my presentation this epigram taken for the manuscript of GA 1933, where an epigram is added by a later end after the Lisa de Ketaya, uh, on the Acts and illustrates the uh, content of the miniature of St. Paul whispering in some words to uh, John Chrysostom that is writing the scroll on his knees. So in this case, a north related epigrams which give also information about the content of the, uh, of the, the miniature. The second category of uh, epigrams uh, uh, that I'm uh, going to discuss with you today included the so-called pattern-related epigrams. Uh, among the 89 manuscripts uh, of the Pseudo-Comenia and Catena on the, uh, on the Pauline letters, only three epigrams uh, are recorded as a pattern related epigrams in the DBBE database. Uh, the first uh, is a uh, present to the uh, manuscript J1994, uh, now lost, uh, but the description is provided by Dorfess in his catalog of the Polignanis manuscripts. Uh, the second one uh, is added after the stichometry and the subscription of uh, uh, the revelation and the end of the manuscript the GA 1862, and it mentions uh, Basilisa Maria. This Basilisa Maria has to be identified with an 11th century Maria of Alania, wife of Michael the Seven Ducas, rather than the 9th century Maria of Amnia, wife of Constantine the Sixth. A second, a third, sorry, and last pattern related epigram that I found in the manuscript that I collected for this presentation is added by a later end after the subscription of the commentary on the two Corinthians and before the hypothesis on the Galatians. In this manus, in this uh, epic, called, uh, the, the, the patron is called as Matthion, uh, who calls himself like a monk, with a standard formula to indicate the possession of the book. So we've got the invocation to God, the Kyrie, plus the attribution, the self-attribution of the, of, the, of, the, of the patron as monk, as doulos, and then the verb echo. Um, the next category uh, of uh, uh, epigrams that I'm, talk, uh, that I'm discussing with you today 
includes a series of prayers, invocations, thanksgiving that can shed a little more light on the scribal activity. For example, in uh, my PowerPoint, I uh, decided to uh, put this type uh, uh, 2626 found in the manuscript Gregory Allen 91, where the scribe uh, the, the says that he added the following table. We don't know exactly what is the table that uh, the table that is referring to, but uh, uh, it can be probably either the table of the magical titles of the acts or the uh, table with the magical titles of the Pauline epistles, because uh, this epigram is added within the Italian apparatus. Uh, in order to help the reader to find easily Rasta the um, the passages, the topos that he needs to uh, he needs to check. Uh, but also we can have uh, the very conventional prayers and dedication for, um, of the scribes to the readers, uh, thanksgivings for the conversion of the book, uh, and invocations to, uh, invocation to, to God, uh, to um, thank God because of the completion of the uh, of the manuscript in particular i decided to put in my present uh, place at the end of the manuscript ga 1906 uh, uh, manuscript qualinianus grecus 28 uh, where um, uh, the, uh, a comparison between the travelers uh, uh, that rejoice to see the homeland uh, and uh, the scribes that is happy to uh, reach the end of the book is established so the scribal epigrams include mostly play, prayers, thanksgivings, uh, invocations of God, but at the same time, it's also colophons, like for uh, the, 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 the type 5120 in, uh, the, uh, in the colophon, in the, in, in, at the end of the ebus in the manuscript of Barberinus Grecus 303, attributed to Yannis de Pagomenos, and also not the possessionis, like in the closing flyleaf of the manuscript J1990. Attributed to uh, Marcos uh, Mamunas, so a, a variety of, uh, of, of texts. Uh, uh, finally, the uh, next category of uh, epigrams uh, um, include uh, uh, the so-called uh, uh, readers' related epigrams. Uh, as you can see, my PowerPoint but just a few. Uh, uh, this category of epigrams appear just in a few manuscripts that are J 056, 91, 203, 1924, and 1934. Uh, they include uh, um, most uh, um, epigrams that are, addressed, uh, to the, that are addressed to the readers. So for example, in the manuscript, in the types that are included in my PowerPoint presentation, uh, uh, that are taken most from the, from the manuscript J 203, uh, attributed to Andreas Moraios, uh, uh, the scribe asks the reader to pray uh, uh, for, his, uh, for his salvation, and in fact, use the very conventional verbs, ikest uh, and mnesceti. But at the same time, you can also have a recommendation of uh, uh, the re uh, recommendation of the book to the reader to have a better life. For example, if this uh, type uh, uh, 3167 that is, uh, that, that is taken from uh, free manuscript J91, J1934, and J1924, the scribe recommend the, uh, book the, uh, the, uh, recommend the book of the revelation of a joint evangelist to the to the reader. Finally, the last uh, categ two categories of New Testament man epigrams that I consider for the presentation are those that are recorded uh, as uh, image-related or text-related epigrams in the uh, database. The first category implies mostly epigrams written alongside uh, the miniature of uh, Paul, biblical figures, uh, or uh, Greek church fathers. For instance, in the manuscript of J1934, there is a series of uh, two uh, book epigrams uh, uh, written into the frame of uh, the miniature that, illustrate, uh, uh, that illustrates uh, uh, John Christopher showing the corpus Paulinum to Ecumenius and Theodoret. In the other case that I put in my presentation is a miniature taken from the manuscript J1970, uh, the Parisinus Paulinianus Vecus 30, and it describes uh, the action of Paul writing the scroll of the Romans before the, the, the text of, uh, of, of, of the Pauline epistle to the Romans. Uh, interesting, in the same manuscript, there are, also, there are other two uh, image related epigrams for the miniature of Saint, uh, Saint Titus and Saint Philemon before the relevant episodes. 
uh, the last uh, category of uh, epigrams that I uh, considered for my presentation today includes the text-related epigrams. Uh, these uh, include mostly short uh, writing text uh, that uh, aims to illustrate, that aim to illustrate the content of the book uh, uh, to the reader. And my special focus primarily on these uh, addings or pinnacles uh, with the dedication of the author and the dedication of the content of the book before uh, each of the relevant poem epistles. In particular, in the manuscript of GA91 that I put on the, on the left of my PowerPoint presentation, there is a, a, a list of uh, metrical titles uh, uh, for each of the poem epistles, and these uh, metrical titles are repeated, uh, repeated uh, separately before each of the relevant uh, poem epistles, either in the upper margin or uh, between, uh, between the text uh, of the first column of the catena and uh, the biblical text in the middle of the page for the frame, uh, for the frame catena. So, just... So, uh, after showing... Uh, there's a, the variety of the epigrams, the book epigrams related to the New Testament catena, and in particular to the manuscripts of the poem epistles, I would like to focus attention on a series of uh, text and author related epigrams that are present in only four slash five manuscripts of out of the 18 manuscripts of the pseudo catena on, on the Romans, according to the database. Uh, these manuscripts are uh, the Parisinus Grecus 219, uh, Gregory Allen 91, the Marcianus Grecus Z34, uh, Gregory Allen 1924, the Parisinus Grecus 224, J1934, and the Parisinus Quarignanus Grecus 207 to the DDBE database. These four manuscripts begin with the uh, type, with the type 3166, that is actually a metrical hypothesis on the Pauline letters. And it's found also in another manuscript that is J1626, that I'm not considering for this presentation because it's not a catena manuscript. So these four manuscripts begin uh, with uh, this uh, metrical hypothesis on the poem epistles. Uh, this hypothesis is, uh, um, is made of 100 dodecasyllables verse uh, and is uh, usually preceded by the adding uh, eton epistolon hypothesis the iambon with the only exception of the manuscript GA 1934 where um, uh, uh, that only has uh, the first 66 verses out of the 100 dodecasyllables of this medical hypothesis. Uh, this hypothesis can be um, structured in three different parts. The first part goes from verses one to verses to, to, from verse one to verse, verse 21 and include a um, description of the rhetoric qualities of Paul with the conventional usual images associated with Paul as a rhetor, uh, Paul as lira, Paul as a formix. The second part of this uh, long metrical hypothesis on the poem epistles uh, goes from the verses uh, 22 to verses 66 uh, and includes a description of the content of each of the, of the, of the 14 poem epistles. Uh, and the last part uh, of uh, uh, this uh, long hypothesis uh, goes from the verses 67 to 110 and include a chronological frame on the contemporary uh, era of, of Paul. So uh, the author described talks about uh, some characters related to the figure of Paul, for example, Nero, Rook, and Aristarchus that are uh, sodales of Paul that Paul mentioned in his episode of Philemon, for example. Uh, this metrical hypothesis is present in, uh, 19, in the GA91, so in Parisinus Grecus 219, after the hypothesis and the list of the Kefalaya on the Acts of the Apostles, while in J1924, J1934, and J1972, this metrical hypothesis is placed after the prologue on the Pauline letters, the peregrination and the martyrdom of Paul, and the list of the Kefalaya on the road to the Romans. Uh, it's usually written into columns uh, in Alexandrian majuscule, uh, with the only exception of the J1972, where the text is, of this medical hypothesis is written in minuscule. 
The, um, in, uh, according to the database, uh, in uh, the manuscript J91, 1924, 1934, and then 1972, other two uh, unusual uh, text and author-related epigrams uh, are added after the text of this medical hypothesis. These epigrams are the types of 3170 and 3172. And as I said before, when I talk about the author-related epigrams, uh, these two epigrams uh, relate to uh, uh, establish, uh, establish a comparison between the figure of Nero, uh, which is uh, called, and they quote, the mother, mother, and annihilator of the sex, uh, uh, servant of Ze Ze Zeus, and uh, on the other side, uh, Paul, that is called uh, Arna and Poimena, so uh, young lamb of Christ and the shepherd of uh, all the earth. This uh, opposition between Nero and uh, Paula is, uh, um, is also present in the other epigram uh, that follows the type of 3170, that is 3172, uh, where, uh, in, uh, in, where similarly uh, the figure of uh, Nero is uh, called as uh, immeasurably tyrannical and uh, uh, it is uh, represented as a lying dead wicked uh, bound forever in chains, uh, while on the other side, uh, Paul uh, lives and speaks every day, seeing the face of God clearly. So this uh, um, series of epigram that is made of uh, this uh, medical hypothesis uh, 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 type 3162 plus uh, these uh, two uh, later um, uh, epigrams uh, uh, attributed to um, um, regarding the uh, figure of Nero and uh, uh, Paul uh, are particularly of uh, this uh, for manuscript. And uh, in particular, I would like to focus attention on this, uh, uh, on this aspect. Uh, the manuscript J1924, 1934, 1972, uh, four epigrams, uh, uh, the type of 3162, 66 plus the types of 3170 and 3172 on Nero and Paul. Uh, present also an alternative beginning of the text of the Catena on the Pauline letters. As I said before, the usual beginning for the text of the uh, pseudo Comenian Catena on the Romans is to aposigraphein aetiotu to autonoma. But uh, 20, 19, uh, 1924, 1934, and 1972 present this alternative beginning that is uh, Tino Seneken aututo onoma. And these are the only manuscripts that presented this alternative beginning out of the uh, 89 manuscripts of the uh, text of tradition. So, um, it, is it just a case that uh, they present also these um, uh, unusual series uh, of uh, uh, Epigrams related to Nero and Paul uh, and this medical hypothesis, that, um, or uh, uh, that the study of the book epigrams can be uh, taken into consideration in order to establish uh, the relationship between some manuscripts, uh, for example, in this case, 1924, 1934, and 1972, that can be uh, proved uh, by the study, of course, of the text of the Catena. This is something that I'm going, uh, uh, that I would like to, uh, uh, to, to, to study further because uh, it, it is interesting whether the study of the book epigrams and the paratextual elements in general, for example, also the Italian apparatus can be a, a, a ring bell uh, to, um, uh, to, to start uh, to establish a relationship between the manuscripts. And uh, I will conclude my presentation with mentioning uh, a few cases of epigrams uh, or possibly epigrams uh, that I, um, uh, that I, um, that I had the chance to, 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 to work on, to study when I selected the manuscript for this presentation. I'm not sure whether this can be considered epigrams or just uh, later annotations by later ends, uh, but maybe this can be also a useful, um, um, a useful um, a topic of discussion later. Uh, so for example, in uh, the manuscript J8, that is the Parisian, it was 237. There are some uh, la later additions by a later 13th, 14th century end. The manuscript is a product uh, of a, a 10th century uh, minuscule bulletin after the um, list of Kefalaya of Ephesians. Uh, according to Pinakes, uh, this uh, could be considered as an epigram, but uh, according to uh, the um, 
uh, the Inizia Caminum Byzantinorum, uh, this is not an epigram, and maybe this is the reason why this uh, annotation was included in the DBBE. But uh, this, uh, this is particularly interesting. The same end, the same letter end from the 13th, 14th century, adds uh, another annotation after the list uh, of the Cephalaia, uh, Cephalaia on the two Timothy in Greek letters, uh, but uh, in a weird alphabet that could be either Arabic or Turkish, which I wasn't able to, uh, uh, to, to translate, uh, but uh, uh, if there is some, someone in the audience that is an expert in uh, Arabic or Turkish, that could be useful to have this translation in order to understand whether this could be an epigram or not. And uh, to not to understand what is the topic of this, uh, uh, of this, uh, of this later annotation. Uh, besides uh, the cases of GA 14 to 24 and 1951, uh, which include, uh, um, uh, uh, which include uh, uh, colophons of the scribes, uh, I'd like to focus your attention in, uh, on uh, uh, this case uh, in a J1870. Uh, the, 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 this is a manuscript with the text of a, of a friend catena on the following letters. And uh, after the stichometry on uh, one Timothy, there are um, there is a long epigram made of 82 uh, dodecasyllables uh, in two columns to read horizontally added by a later end. Uh, in my opinion, this is a text related a series of four epigrams separate each other. Uh, and uh, they, uh, according to the Pina case database, they uh, refer to uh, the, um, to Christ, uh, to uh, um, the Trinity and to the Theotokos. So to sum up, uh, this uh, presentation aimed to offer a general overview on the distribution on the use, uh, the content, uh, uh, and the position of the book epigrams in the New Testament uh, uh, catena, with a particular focus on the Pauline epistles and on the uh, Pseudo-Cumenian Catenum Romans. Uh, of course, uh, the scenario is various, uh, and uh, um, as I said before, it will be very interesting to keep on going with uh, the studying of uh, these uh, uh, of these epigrams, especially uh, on the epigrams uh, of uh, the manuscript of the last four manuscripts that I. Uh, uh, discussed uh, in the later part of my presentation. Uh, I would like also to consider whether these uh, three series of epigrams, uh, the metrical hypothesis between, before the Pauline epistles, followed by the two epigrams on Paul and Nero, are from the same authors. Uh, what, what is the function of these uh, three epigrams before the text of uh, um, uh, the Pauline letters? And uh, as I said before, it is just a case uh, that uh, this free manuscript, uh, J1924, J1934, AJ1972, have the same alternative beginning of the text of the, the uh, pseudo comedian catena besides uh, the present of these uh, unusual epigrams uh, in front of the before the text of the Pauline epistles. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Jacopo, for giving us this, uh, this wonderful overview of a very complex tradition, which is also um, very rich um, and a very rich treasure trove for book epigrams. Uh, it was very nice to, to hear about this. Um, now there is time for questions, so I would suggest that um, people who have questions can raise their hand and I will um, give them the floor, or um, if you feel more comfortable, you can also add your um, question in the chat um, and I will read it to uh, Jacopo. So is there anyone who would like to start the discussion? Christina, I see that you have uh, raised your hand, so go ahead. Thank you, Sim, and thanks, Jacopo, grazie for uh, this amazing paper, really. I really enjoyed especially, you know, the last part, because uh, there is indeed material for us to, to discuss. So um, I have very small remarks. Um, the, the first question is related to your thesis in general, because I remember when we met in Bruxelles, we were at the beginning of our doctoral researches, and you mentioned the vast amount of witnesses you, you had to work on. So I was wondering which was uh, uh, the criterion of your choice for the eight manuscripts uh, for your final edition. And uh, related to DBB and also the Birmingham environment in general, uh, are you planning to also offer a digital edition uh, of this? 
the, the last remark I have is about, uh, indeed, I think your last uh, slide, uh, where there were, you know, um, the uh, possible epigrams about uh, what you call the GA82. Um, so just looking a bit at it, I think this is a penitential text. So um, there are some topoi that are typical of catanictic uh, uh, poems in particular. So, you know, the fear of the last judgment. And indeed, you know, this was also a good environment for book epigrams. We have some of them. There is a penitential tag in the database. So maybe, you know, yes, we can go on on this and, uh, and look about this. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Christina, for uh, for the questions. And so, first of all, you uh, asked me about the criteria um, behind the selection of the manuscript for the edition. So, um, when I selected the manuscript for the edition, I started working on a test passage that I selected in agreement with my supervisor, Hugh Houghton. So, we selected a, a test passage that was Roman 7.8. That is the, set, the same test passage that uh, is present in the uh, Carol Itzman uh, catalog of the, um, of the Catena on the New Testament. Uh, because in these passages, they, there are all the, um, the, all the three stages uh, of uh, the text uh, of the Pseudocumene and Catena Roman. So in this passage, Roman 7.8, we've got the, the first stage of the number comments. Uh, plus the first later edition of the Extravagantes and the last edition uh, uh, of the Scuola Fuziana. So I used this uh, test passage and uh, I um, compared this passage to uh, throughout all the 89 manuscripts of the pseudo Communion tradition. And uh, uh, I, uh, I listed uh, all the manuscripts of the uh, pseudo Communion tradition within uh, these uh, uh, four different groups. Uh, so the manuscript with uh, the, uh, the, the, the first, uh, um, the, uh, the normal type, so the manuscript with the first, uh, uh, with the number comments and the extravagantes, the number, the, the manuscript with uh, uh, the number comments, the extravagantes and the Fuziana, and the manuscripts that have just uh, uh, random extracts from the Pseudocumene and Catena, and the manuscript with an abridged later development of the text of the Catena. And uh, uh, after uh, listing all the manuscripts within these four groups, I selected uh, the most representative. For example, G9, GA91 uh, that I described uh, in the last part of my presentation today is one of the manuscripts that I selected for the, um, for the edition because uh, is, uh, uh, th th that's the manuscript that was used uh, for uh, um, the Ebizzo Princeps and for the republication of the uh, Ebizzo Princeps by Migne. Or, for example, the manuscript that I presented at the beginning, J1923, was selected because uh, it contains the whole set of, uh, of, um, of, um, of stages. So uh, let's say that for each of the four stages, uh, I selected the three most representative uh, uh, manuscript uh, based on uh, the classification that they made uh, re according to a test passage uh, to uh, understand also the relationship between uh, all the manuscripts of the of the uh, of the tradition. Of course. Uh, in order to publish a critical edition of the text, it will be useful to consult the text in all the 89 manuscripts of the tradition. But I mean, uh, the time is running very fast. So <laughs> uh, I, I didn't have the time to, to, to I, I had the time to look at all the manuscripts for the test passage, but not for the, uh, the old text. And uh, the second question was uh, about, uh, uh, Are you planning a digital edition? About the, uh, uh, yes, um, yes, actually at the moment I'm working on a the digital edition of the text. Uh, so I'm uh, working on uh, processing the text in XML version uh, in order to have an online edition of, uh, of the text. I don't know whether the uh, Italian apparatus uh, and uh, the sets of the, of the epigrams will be available. Uh, on the online edition or not, uh, because it's uh, still something that I have to uh, discuss with my supervisor or just the text of uh, the, the Catena uh, on Romance will be available. But uh, yes, uh, there will be a digital edition of the text. And thank you also for the DBE, for your suggestion of the penitential 
text. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I don't see any, so I will ask one of the many questions I have about this material. <laughs> um, I, I really liked um, actually the last point you made, um, namely that you can use these epigrams uh, as, as um, as a help actually to define groups within the manuscript tradition. And I, I, I was really intrigued by the fact that this this presence of these epigrams was connected to um, variation in the main text. And um, I was wondering <coughs> if you have seen similar um, similar things uh, somewhere else in the tradition that, for example, um, when you when you list your four groups, um, of, of manuscripts, do you see that some epigrams um, occur only in one group or in several groups? And um, how do you how do you use that in in your argumentation uh, about the manuscript tradition? Uh, so um, I don't know really how to uh, answer about this because actually, uh, when I was working on the um, on the first description of the manuscripts uh, uh, of the pseudo and Catenan romance, uh, I noticed the presence, for example, of the so-called Italian apparatus, but the Italian apparatus is very, I mean, my impression is that it's very standard. So basically almost uh, uh, all the manuscripts of the pseudo and Catena have uh, either an extended or a shortened version of the Italian apparatus made of, uh, for example, only the preface on the on, uh, on the Pauline, uh, on the romance, uh, or uh, the set of uh, the Pauline letters, uh, uh, the, sorry, the, the prologue on the Pauline letters, the preface on the Roman, the list of the Kefalaya, the list of the Pauline letters. But uh, uh, I mean, there are actually, now that I'm thinking about, there are actually uh, uh, two or uh, um, three manuscripts uh, that are part of the uh, abridged version group. Uh, so the manuscript that uh, present an abbreviated version of the text uh, of the Pseudocumene and Catena with a distinctive um, uh, Italian apparatus. So for example, I, I, I'm not quite sure to remember clearly uh, the, 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 the type of texts uh, uh, of the Italian apparatus in this manuscript, but for example, we've got uh, the uh, prologue on the Pauline epistles, the hypothesis on the romance, the peregrination of Paul, the martyrdom of Paul, plus uh, additional texts, uh, for example, the list of uh, biblical names uh, in the uh, text, uh, in the biblical text, uh, or the list of the Byzantine imperials uh, uh, that are present only in the basic three manuscripts, uh, three or four manuscripts of the abridged version. So in that case, yes, in that case, uh, the study of the apparatus can be used as a, 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 a ring bell, a, 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 um, a tool to uh, investigate on the relationship between the manuscripts. Uh, Yes, but uh, uh, it's difficult to talk about the Italian apparatus because it's very standardized uh, uh, text. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Ah, uh, Julian, yes, I see you raising your hand physically. Yes, uh, sorry, I couldn't find the function no, no. in the program and I just uh, did the old school. Uh, hand raising. Uh, thank you, Jacopo. This was uh, an amazing overview and uh, you managed to fit everything in, uh, in one presentation. Uh, congratulations. Uh, again, I have several questions, um, but I will just make two not related, but uh, maybe you can elaborate a bit more. The first is um, about, about the, um, the epigram in an, in an unknown language even if uh, the characters are Greek. Um, my question is why you guess it's uh, Arabic or uh, Turkish? Uh, and, um, and if you can trace this, um, this uh, guess of, your, of yours um, in, the, in what we know about the manuscript, where it was and et cetera. 
And the other question is out of ignorance. Um, I have noticed while sometimes coming across these epigrams on Paul uh, about this um, this um, this uh, typical metaphors used. For example, the one of the storm. I noted down. Um, are these things? Are these um, are this uh, formula uh, coming again in other texts, uh, in other parts of the catena, in other uh, paratexts? These um, these symbols on Paul. Which formula? Sorry. The, the, like for example, the, the metaphor of, of the storm that you mentioned at certain point, and <coughs> and uh, and the wave, the th the threefold wave, and and so on. Um, or yeah. Yes. Or, so. Um... Uh, your first question you said was about the um, um, the two language. Uh, uh, the, like, yes, exactly. So, um, so actually, uh, w w when I was consulting the manuscript for uh, this presentation, I um, uh, I um, yeah, I, I, I was studying this manuscript and uh, I realized that the text of this epic amounted in the margin of uh, uh, after the, the subscription of uh, to Timothy, I think, uh, don't remember precisely the, uh, the, the letter, but I think he was to Timothy, um, was it in Greek language. So I, I just realized that there is in the, in, also in the, in, the, in the reproduction, the photo that I, in the picture that they put in my PowerPoint presentation, a, a word that could be kurbalaku, which in the TLG, I found something related to Venus. So Kubar was the Arabic version of Venus. However, I'm not uh, sure if this is uh, related to that uh, or, or not, uh, because I mean, it's, it, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's unusual to find uh, Venus in an epigram in a New Testament catena. But uh, uh, Kubar was the, uh, the, the only word that can associated with uh, uh, something in that case related to the, uh, to the Arabic. Uh, because uh, uh, I also uh, asked my co-supervisor whether this can be uh, Greek or not, uh, but I didn't find any word connected with Greek. Uh, uh, I read something like Aramizu Marku Men Kubarlaku. So mm, very uh, weird word. The other possibility, but I'm, I'm not sure it could be that uh, it's like a language code or uh, cryptographic, but I don't think this is cryptographic because the, uh, the, the, um, the, the symbols are different. Uh, uh, so uh, um, I found this Kubar Laku as uh, referred to Kubar as Venus in Arabic. And uh, I also looked at the manuscript in the Pinakes and the Pinakes says that uh, this epigram could be either Turkish or Arabic. Uh, but I also asked to my biblical uh, Hebrew teacher that is a, 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 a uh, very into the study of Arabic and uh, other uh, Semitic languages, but uh, he couldn't translate this uh, uh, this, uh, this this epigram. So um, I don't know. Uh, this is something that it would be interesting to uh, consider deeper. The other things that, as I said, is related to something uh, uh, related to Arabic is this cool balaku that is similar to kubar, that Venus Venus for. Uh, in Arab, in Arabic, but uh, yes, I'm, I'm not sure. And uh, the um, the manuscript in question is a uh, uh, is a, a frame catena with uh, uh, and is uh, is part of uh, uh, the manuscripts of type E. So uh, this is a manuscript with just. Uh, uh, a few extracts uh, from uh, the uh, Pseudocumena catena on the Romans. Uh, it is a manuscript from the 10th century. Uh, so I think uh, there is also. Um, uh, I think this manuscript is also included into uh, Maria Luisa Gatti works on the Minuscule Bulletin. Uh, so maybe if uh, uh, we check on the uh, Gatti's book, maybe there is a mention of this manuscript and also maybe there is a reference of uh, the epiga, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. And um, and uh, and that, that's all uh, about the, uh, the, the manuscript. About the um, metaphors of the storm. Uh, so I found these metaphors uh, in the uh, in the type 6006 uh, in the manuscript 1845. 
and this is uh, the, the only occurrence uh, where the only occurrences where I found uh, these uh, images of Paul of Paul associated with uh, the storm, uh, this trifold wave, and uh, a hurricane. Okay, so it's rather uh, exclusive to this epigram. It's not a, a recurring theme or topic. Or... Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, there is a, a suggestion in the chat actually about the um, the mysterious language um, that says, "Could it be Karamanli language?" So maybe that is something for you to uh, look into. Um, thank you, you thank can... you, Gabriel, for the for the tip. <laughs> yes, might be uh, worth exploring. Um, are there any other questions? No, so okay, then uh, I would like to thank you again, Jacopo. It was really very, very interesting and very intriguing material that you presented to us. Um, I would also like to thank all of you for being here. And I would also like to uh, invite you to our next lecture, which will be on the 27th of April. Um, and then we will hear Alessandra Paula speak about manuscript tradition and cultural perspectives. Uh, and she will investigate two um, epigrams from the Antologia Palatina. So I hope to see all, um, many of you uh, there again. Thank you very much, Jacopo, and see you all Thank soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Good evening. <laughs>